and this was possibly one of the best photos from last year, man, was when you and Ice Cube embraced after the, that animosity, man. Like, how did that transpire, and what's the feeling like now? Man, I'm going to say this, and and this is why I wanted to do the interview with y'all. Mm-hmm. Just like that song just say in J.D.'s Revenge, it say, fuck what you heard, bitch. I'm my own boss. Me and Ice Cube, cool as Gatorade Frost. Spent a little time <laughs> talking shit to the boss. And his final words was, J.D., fuck what it cost. Resume normal program. Now it's yard recall. Lock it up. Get ready for count and watch me ball. We talk about movies, marijuana, and music. I know my next tattoo now. Just do it. You know what I'm saying? That's me and Ice yep. Cube. That's me and Cube. So... The grown man in me and the conversation from that grown man and me apologizing to him and vice versa, bro, it just showed me that the nigga fresh out of prison after 28 years can give an apology and the nigga that's worth damn near a billion dollars can also extend one as well. That spoke volumes. We both fathers, we both husbands, we both grandfathers. So that immature, whatever that ever happened 25 fucking years ago, and the poison of everybody wanting to add to that is, I heard J.D. said this, and Cube said he'll never fuck with you again, and then J.D. said this from prison, and then the snowball, the snowball, long story short, all that shit was bullshit. Mm -hmm. And so when we got a chance to talk about, why didn't you come for me, bro? And all the fucking truth came out. Only thing I could do is be like, "Thank this a bitch. We cheated ourselves out the opportunity, bro, listening to other motherfuckers. And then when the opportunity came for two grown men to talk, that nigga Ice Cube carved out a path so beautiful, bro. It ain't happened yet. But he carved out a path so beautiful, bro. All I got to do is just kick back and get the fuck off the road. And we're going to resume normal program. Man, and look, the broadcast is loud and direct. You know, y'all are stronger together. Um, JD, so much went on during that time. We wanted to, because we got, we still got some time left, but we wanted to talk to you and Dyer about y'all observations over the years, because there was a lot. You know, Q was just beginning to start his movie career in earnest. Uh, of course, 91 with Boys in the Hood, his debut. You know, but of course, now he's got the big three basketball league, you know, has become you know, Daddy Cube to a whole new generation. Uh, we saw Nipsey rest his soul. We saw what Nipsey did in terms of what he started with the marathon movement, you know, on Crenshaw. Shout out to the 60s. Um, we saw 50 Cent do what he did on his come up. I, I mean, they're just so much. Um, we wanted to, for some of the most notable that we may mention and not mention, but what you all may mention and want to talk mm-hmm. about, uh, what were some of the biggest moments over the years that you saw with a lot of the artists just starting and where they're at today? What, I'm, I'm going to stay with Q real quick before Lancey answers. Go ahead. Please, I please, say, please. I say Ice Q real quick because that nigga had the best people around him his entire career. One. Mm-hmm. Two. Kept his name virtually out of every headline for scandal and bullshit. Three. His right. wife, Kimberly. She been a motherfucking rock since I knew who she was in 89, 90, when we first flew to go do the album with fucking uh, 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 Hank Shockley and Keith Shockley and Eric Saller. The, yeah, bomb, the bomb squad, squad. yeah. And so she had, she's been his constant, bro, since fucking 89, 90. Now, the caliber of people that he had around him, the right financial advisors, motherfucker making the right investments, the people, and then him being a family man. And growing into that family man position. That motherfucker, man, I don't give a fuck if he was worth $55. The nigga business model and his acumen alone speaks volume of the motherfucking people he kept around him. Look at J.D. Mm-hmm. Look at the people he kept around him. I had to make the sacrifice of the streets. Snitch and not be a snitch. But the people I had around me was like, bro, we wasn't raised like that, my nigga. And I'm like, I know, my nigga, I ain't never going to tell cuz. And I go through 28 years while this man virtually lived a dream. That is impressive, bro. I tip my hat to niggas like that. I tip my hat to niggas like that. He didn't lose his fortune. 
He ain't got his family all fucked up. His children know the value of a dollar. He made them audition for 40 fucking uh, uh, the, the, the Den of Thieves and fucking straight out of Compton. He made his kid audition. That's discipline, bro. That's the motherfucker yeah. who raised his family. And the only way to do that is to have the right model. And that come from his parents and the right people around him, my nigga. Um, Jay-Z, Jay-Z, what about Jay-Z? Because Jay-Z was not really, he he had his first single, Can't Get With That, you know, back in the day in 94 when he was uh, had a joint with Freeze Records. Um, of course, he was on a Go to Blazers, 88. Can I Get Open. You Go know, to 88 uh, what, to Hawaiian Sophie. Go to 88 yeah, to Hawaiian yeah, course, Sophie with him and Jazz O. Yeah. When my nigga Jazz, yeah. my nigga Jazz, I ain't seen Jazz in forever. But Jay-Z, hunger. That's a different kind of hunger. That's a different kind of hunger that I don't want to go through what I went through. A lot of his pain come through his song, so you hear about the absence of his dad and everything that his mother was. You know what I'm saying? And what Mrs. Carter meant to him. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So you get to hear his pain. And no matter how much motherfucking money you get, we all get to deal with our trauma the same, bro. Honesty mm-hmm. and vulnerability. So no motherfucking, no dollar amount mask that. Honesty and vulnerability allows every man to deal with his trauma, whether it's childhood trauma or young adult trauma, bad choices, bad decisions, prison or the projects. It don't matter. Mm-hmm. 